Hi nerdies, it's Danny. I'm oh my goodness, my entire Word document just crashed. <laughs> <laughs> of course. No, it's one, I... one thing after another. Oh yeah, this is gonna be so good, guys. Woo. It's Danny. We're back with another episode of Chatting with the Nerdies. I'm here with Stories and Sorceries. They're a actual play 5e D D podcast. Um, and why don't we go around, have y'all introduce yourselves, your character names, uh, like class, race, little tidbit, all that jazz. Uh, I guess you I'm start. going first. Then. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Alphabetical. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. Uh, my name is Rob Franks, and in the campaign, I play Alfie Windrunner. He is a half-elf, uh, Drake Warden Ranger. Um... We, we're we're just a ragtag group who owns a bar, and uh, we just do some jobs here and there, get into some stuff. And a little tidbit about him: he has a brother that he tries his best to take care of. He's uh, also one of the players, and he doesn't necessarily have anything a big picture plan. He's just kind of a live life by the day kind of person. I was real scared for a second that you were going to say live, laugh, love. And oh, like, no, no, no. You're not. Unless there's Skeletor pictures in that, I, I don't want nothing to do with that kind of stuff. Brian, your turn. I nominate you. <laughs> okay. Um, I play a assassination rogue named Rolo Windrunner, who is the twin of Alfie. Um, so he has no goals either. Literally does besides taking everything he wants. Uh, he, he can, uh, if he sees something that's even remotely shiny that he thinks that he could use or be sold, he steals it or attempts to. I don't think I failed yet. <laughs> so, um, operative words. And he definitely does the opposite of what a normal person would ever do in real life. Also checks out. Yeah, hundred percent. Tear it off. <laughs> Flash cut to every time Brynn has said, "Rolo's pretty much just me." No, I said I'm scared. I'm turning into Rolo. That's that's what I said. <laughs> uh, so Trent, you're next. He looks frozen. Oh, there he goes. Indeed. Oh, everybody's frozen. Ah. Uh, uh, my name's Trent Johnson, before it be called Trent. Uh, and I play Edward Truffle, who is uh, uh, a bard and college of the sword. Uh, Edward is... Uh, tries to always oh, to be reasonable. Uh, he just wants to make people smile, show off his juggling. Uh, just make sure everyone has a good time. That leaves me. I'm Will Roberts. Call me Will. I'm the DM, so I'll play everybody who needs a voice before they get killed by this guy. What? <laughs> I haven't killed anybody. Well, I mean, I've killed people. Accurate. But I have. Accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, he threw you under the bus, and then you went ahead and did that yourself. No one unwarranted. <laughs> Whatever you need to tell yourself to sleep at night. Yeah. So, um, what's y'all's campaign about right now? Like, what's the kind of main thing that y'all are up to? Oh, I can't wait to hear this answer. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, oh wait. So, what, I mean, I I think I know the overlining goal is uh, Alfie and Rolo are for, actually from the Feywilds. And in the last contract uh, assassination killing that they had they touched an orb uh got teleported to the material plane and during one of our quests we found a fraction of that orb so i kind of to my understanding is we're going around doing all these odds and end quests but also looking for the other fractions to recombine it and get back to our home oh i love that well is that roughly correct or yeah sound, sounds like what y'all are doing yeah. As far as we know. <laughs> as far as you know. <laughs> I'll tell you. I mean, right now my character looks like he's about to go skiing, but... 
you are in mountains and it is snowy. So I have furry boots. The boots with the fur? Yeah. Yeah. And the boots. All right, and if y'all had to put a percentage to like role play versus combat, where would where would that fall? Like preference, the, I guess preference and like what the the campaign has had so far. I would say we're relatively even. Um, I'd say we. Uh, I'm, I'm in about certain, well, in certain episodes, we we definitely veer a little more towards role play heavy, but Will does make sure to give us plenty of combat to throw in there to keep us on our toes so to speak and they get antsy otherwise well one of us does i mean i'm not gonna lie i say that we are mainly more role play uh as of recently except for when i create my own combat that's that's a hundred percent fair yep yeah every episode can be a combat episode if you try hard enough I throw <laughs> it up. that's very one true thing. Uh, as far as personal preference, um, I really love aspects of both. I, I, I would not say that I'm more interested in one over the other. Um, I, I very much enjoy having a good session of just getting down and dirty with like inner workings of player characters and how they work with one another and finding out secrets and you know doing all that stuff. But on the same hand, I would have zero issues doing something like last week's one shot where there was very minimal role play and all we did was fight things in hell that was also a very fun time pretty solid listen sometimes you got to go to hell and sometimes things just have to die along the way that's it and do you guys have like a set like dm for your one shots or does it kind of like rotate around we've been rotating dms just so my brain doesn't slip out of my ears on a week to week basis (laughs) You're not stuck in the forever DM position. <laughs> I try my best to not keep him there too long. <laughs> and are your one shots like connected together, or are they pretty pretty standalone? Standalone, more, yeah. more, more or less standalone. Yet. We had a we had a dungeon, we had a circus, and then we had hell. Yeah, I feel like we're missing. No, that that was awesome. the barbarian yeah. one shot. Well, we didn't. <laughs> I guess we put that in there. I guess that'd be two dungeons, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Um, they're not necessarily... Do... Oh, oh, sorry. No, no, what were you saying? They're not Go necessarily... Ahead. They're not set in the same world or anything like mm-hmm. that, uh, just to kind of further answer your question. Okay. That, I mean, that's fun, you know? Because I know some people, they're like, oh, you know, we're going to have a little, like, three-session arc and then get back to our main... our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. We haven't... It's never a three session. I didn't hear any of that. <laughs> and then oh, <it> just... yeah. <laughs> but I did set my uh, my one shot up to have a continuation if if I wanted to. So that's fun. I uh, I will say uh, the uh, cool, uh, one shot that we uh, did was a uh, based uh, in the world of uh, our home uh, game that I DM called the Kelican Campaign. Uh, that one shot was based in that world. Okay. That's cool. Um, how did y'all meet? Like, how did you like get together and we're like, let's let's start a D and D group. Let's let's do this. Uh, uh, well, me and Bryn are cousins, so we've known each other, you know, our whole lives. And Will and yeah, Will and Trent, they have a mutual friend with me, and that's how I was introduced to the initial group which we originally had, I believe, six or seven people in. And so that's when I really got into D&D, was when I got introduced to this group through that mutual friend. And so I just stuck with them. We had a big, long-lasting home campaign that eventually fizzled out due to a couple of people having to leave and this and that. And uh, so we just kind of kept with it. Eventually, I got my cousin to come in and play a couple sessions. And over time, we were like, we should just record this and put it on the internet. And finally we did. Yeah, that home game got murdered by the true big bad. Scheduling conflicts. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's that's how that's how you get got, you know? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um and so so how long have you guys been like playing and recording like all together, like with the cast as um, is? I don't know. Right. Feels like maybe three weeks. It was not three weeks. No. 
Oh, we have double double uh, episodes. We, not possible. <laughs> we our first episode that we released uh, out into the world was on April first, and so we've been we've been recording and posting since then. Uh, I've actually been playing with Trent and Will for about two and a half years because that's about how long I've been playing D and D, and I think. I don't remember how long you've been here, Brian. Like a year, roughly. Yeah, uh, uh, over yeah. a year now. Okay. Okay. Um, and y'all play in person, right? Y'all, uh, yes. yes, yes. Yeah, I'm from Texas. I say y'all a lot. We're, We're from Tennessee. Tennessee, so do we. Um. So, what is one of your yep. favorite D and D moments from either campaign, one shot? Oh man. So in recent I'll memory, first. I think when uh, Core, nope, Helm, God of Defense, came down and just laid his hands <laughs> hey, on hey. Rob, prevented him from ever being hurt again. Was oh, great. dude, that was that's so Helm, God of Protection, sir. But every time that he did his stupid catchphrase, I rolled a miss. Like it was dumb. I mean, he's oh. the God of Protection. I don't know what more you thought he's was going to happen. Character. I missed. <laughs> you have a catchphrase, like as a character. Well, this specific character, we did a we did a one shot with all paladins, and I was the only one that was a pure paladin. So I was looking through the pantheon, and I was like, I want something that's just like he is there to to do away with evil doers, and he just he protects the innocent. This and that. One of the first things I saw: Helm, God of Protection. Can't get much better than that. And so I went with him, and uh, I'd originally had a different plan for this voice. He was supposed to sound like a character from a TV show I like. He came out like Yogi Bear, which was just <laughs> unfortunate. Uh, from a TV show you like. Yeah, it was from, I don't know if you've ever watched it, but um, The Last Kingdom, it's on Netflix. It's uh, yeah. like a Viking-style show. Well, I the, okay. go ahead. No, 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 no. You go okay. Um, so, if you don't know the show, the main character, his name is Uhtred, son of Uhtred. And I just always thought that was really funny. So, I was like, all right, I'm going with uh, Shepherd, son of Shepherd, and my god is Helm, god of protection. And so, anytime I'd introduce myself or if somebody was attacking, I'd just be like, no, no, no. Helm, god of protection, is not going to allow you to do this. And then he'd just straight roll a three. It was awful. It was fantastic. <laughs> I just want to throw it out there. That was my first time DMing, and these fuckers picked four paladins. We like, did. We did. At that, that at, plus 20 at level, all saves. At level what? 16 or 17? 16. 16? 16. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was... Uh... Listen, we could have been five monks. <laughs> four, four monks. I'm traumatized. See, it can always be worse, cousin. <laughs> worse than plus 25 to all your saves? Hey, listen. Okay, next time you DM a one shot, we'll we'll all pick the same class, and I'll make all the characters. How about that? Hey, you don't want that. You don't want that boy. Uh, so I didn't do my bosses right either. <laughs> so yeah, stuff happens. Uh, it, it seems like a really really difficult to find that that nice space between way too easy combat and you just kill the entire party. Oh, it's a fine line. I'm having a hard time balancing that because I'll be like, oh, this guy has a fair AC and a good amount of health. And then they'll go into combat and this dude's going to be like, okay, I rolled a hit. That's 37. I'm going to roll damage. 98. Oh. Oh. I remember uh, back in the uh, Dragon Bane campaign, our fourth home game, uh, Will put us up against uh, uh, a uh, adult red dragon and we two torned it. And Will was like, well, why? And <laughs> so. No, that was before Rob showed up. I was like. Yeah. It's wild. <laughs> y'all, y'all seem like you get up to some shit. Like, in, in the best way, though. But y'all seem like you oh. get up to some shit. I get oh, there are shenanigans. Yeah, it's that's, on the weekly agenda. That's yeah, my, written on the whiteboard. Get into shit. That's my character. <laughs> From Wolo uh, stealing stuff, from Edward uh, wasting people's memories, 
We'll go all about those snaggins. And poor Alfie is just trying to keep the team from splitting up. <laughs> but they're talking to Grass. <laughs> hey, man, Grass has good stuff to say. You just got to listen. Really? Because they called you evil. <laughs> no. No, 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 that's not true. No, like you said that he was like you came from that ship that destroys or that thing that destroys all. Yeah, like not him these. specifically. I'm pretty sure he did yeah. specifically. It's people who cut down trees to make ships that are the evil ones. <laughs> um, as far as my my favorite memory, uh, yeah. oh. I would say. A quick knockback back to our home, our original home campaign, Dragon's Bane. I made a, a gnome wizard named Smitty. And uh, I don't know, three or four months in, we, we go to face, it's either an adult or an ancient black dragon. And this thing turns tail and just runs away. So me and my infant uh, D&D brain, I'm like, well, the only possible reason is because it has like two HP left. So if I fly after it, cast a fireball, I'm going to kill it and be the savior. Well, that didn't work because it did not kill it and it, it, it made it angry. And this, this homebrew dragon just so happened to have a disintegrate spell. And uh, Smitty, he didn't have 40 hit points left. So he got turned to dust. And uh, that, that was a time. But luckily, my DM was being real cool about it, and uh, I multiclassed into Warlock, and my patron was like, no, 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 I'm not done with you yet. I'm going to turn you into a tree, and you're going to finish doing what you told me you were going to do. Everybody gets one. Yep, that's it. <laughs> that was my one. <laughs> so uh, that was mine. But, uh, well, uh, that uh, black dragon was an ancient uh, green dragon. Oh, it was green. Yep, I'm sorry. Wrong dragon. Oh, man. I say that my favorite is when I was going to assassin, try to assassinate a certain captain. Uh, That's your favorite? <laughs> really? At the same time, no. Alfie was talking to Grass. Yeah. No, it's whenever Ro Rolo has a tendency to, whenever he rolls stealth, he thinks he's actually invisible. And I was like, Tom from Tom and Jerry walk like walking on my fingers in Edward's shadow stealthily, thinking that no one can see me, all the way to the door. Yeah. And I think I, I think that had to be like my favorite moment because of just how you portrayed it when you said it. <laughs> I tried. It wasn't me getting my ass kicked by the captain. <laughs> no. I'll give it to Will. Wait. He has a way of descriptions that are yeah. just encapsulating. Yeah. I love the like duality of twins here. One's talking to the grass, and the other one's like, "Yeah, let me go kill this man." That if that's not Alfie and Rolo, I just don't know what is. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, one of uh, my favorite moments is uh, is also from the uh, Dragon Bane uh, home game. Uh, it's when uh, Bob's character Smitty uh, uh, destroyed. Uh, Oh, no, uh, uh, destroyed uh, one of the people that we were playing with. Uh, he, he had a character named uh, uh, Westbutin, who was a Warforge, and uh, he disintegrated his shield, and then he blamed it on someone else with modified memory. I did do that. To be fair, to be fair, he chopped down one of my trees that I explicitly told him in and out of game to please not chop down. <laughs> Revenge had to be taken. And this series of events between one chopping a tree, one destroying a shield, created a, a, a like a tear between the two actual players and their characters all the way up. <laughs> it, it hasn't changed anything. Yeah, no, he, like, held, a, he held a big grudge on that one. In yeah. game or out of game? Oh, both. 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 Every. Every campaign, every one shot, every time we're just chilling in person. Doesn't matter. Brudge. Yeah. He, he's still probably upset about it. He might oh, be. Yeah, no, he said, he said he's never getting over it. That's fine. With an heirloom shield. Oh. People. It was trash. 
I planted that tree with my own two hands. Yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, gave him an AC of like thirty-five. Oh, y'all told me it, it, it was just a normal shield. It wasn't. It was a non-magical shield. Yeah, oh. it, just, it was. It was a homebrew shield. It was a tower shield. Oh, uh, well, he could have got a better tower shield. That was pretty cool. get a new one. Yeah. Go fuck it. Get a new one. Still a new one. He's a war forged. So he, he'd be doing a lot of clanking with he, when he moves. Not, not many options for stealth there. Oh, there's certain fruit you can get. He just got... <laughs> just, awesome. just always away. Just always away. If there's a will, there's a way. Always. And there's a will. Always <laughs> <laughs> so, DM, uh, do you have a favorite, like, moment from a session? Oh, man. I've just put up so many mental blocks. I've got you to, know which really... moment it is. We know you know. I don't know. What what nice thing did I try to do recently that didn't work out for me? You're going to have to be slightly more specific. You've done that often. Bren just had an epiphany. <laughs> yeah, I just had an epiphany that, like, I don't know if that was my favorite moment. I think drugging the whole ship with shrooms might have been it. That was a good one. That, that was oh, a really good one. Speaking of the ship, uh, they had an NPC who just couldn't catch a break. Homeboy <laughs> got played into being con- convincing everybody else that he was crazy, getting his jaw broke, waking up, getting drugged, getting punched in the face. It's just, just a nonstop pain train. Oh, that and is he, rough. Right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he thought it, he thought it was season spice. He yeah. was wrong. It was shrooms. I'm talking about the owl bear, by the way, Will. Oh, oh yeah, 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 that was that, that was pretty great. I also have created chloroform in this uh, reality. So you you have chloroform. I created it. Well, he invented I, it. I call Roloform, and it's my go-to. That is that is scary. That is dangerous. It's I used terrifying. it on Edward. And tried to run away. Oh, oh. So that's that's the instance you're going to go to, not the one where you. Drug that guy into the back alley. I was. I and was. Stole his how pants. many people Let's, do you guys drug in this campaign? Let me be clear. Rolo is the one that does the drugging. <laughs> I'm a poisoner. It's what I do. It, it's less of what's with this campaign and more of just what's with this guy. You know. Those poor NPCs. I know. I know. Because <laughs> it's just factual, Bryn. Wait, wasn't it that guy I got the shrooms from? Yeah, it was in his pouch. Yeah. Yeah. So I need to know what what is this with this owl bear? Oh. Rolo what? wanted a combat. <laughs> and his brother, being just so giving, said, Alright, I'ma find you a monster to fight. Can't be no innocent animal, it has to be some kind of monster. So I let him roll survival, try to find some tracks, he found he found some owl bear tracks. Tracked it back to the den, pissed it off. Tried to get away. It was faster than him. He forgot he could tree stride. Much faster. He also forgot he could tree stride. Uh, and then he got ragdolled that. like some kind of sock puppet against a dog, just like annihilated. Like Avengers One, Loki, and Hulk. That was yeah, yeah. That, that was, was it. it. Oh, that is that is hilarious, but also rough. Lived. Oh yeah, it was bad. Yeah. Uh, I think I walked away with that with twelve HP left. Yeah, it took us a minute to get there. So, yeah, because he didn't tell anybody what he was doing. He just went off in the woods and then got his ass beat by an owl bear. So y'all had hey, to look, save him sight. from the owl bear, or did you just like find his limp body just oh, on no, the he, ground? He called out for help, like a certain story I remember telling earlier in the campaign. Yeah, <laughs> that was a good, that was a good story too. Sure, it, it, it was great. Hundred percent. Mm. Oh, so uh, do you all have a party name? Come on, so, uh, the Faded, the Faded Four. Four. Okay. The Faded Four. We, we do realize there's only three of us. Yes, that's that's why I wanted to go with it. I'm a huge fan of alliteration. Well, but, you also there might be, but there might be four sooner or later. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Spoilers. <sighs> no, no, we still got to fight them, and we suck at fighting things. You have the DM, so I mean, it's it's God, you know. You have your little God pop in. That's what I for. said, and he said every time I ask, "Hey, are we gonna find uh, JD's character?" He's like, "I don't know. It's up to you." I'm just like, 
Okay. We're never going to find him. It's not going to happen. I can't make it easy. So was he just sitting on the sidelines? Hey, like, we're going to find him. In, like, Pretty, now's yeah. your moment. <laughs> He's he's in the room like every time, just sitting there waiting. <laughs> on standby. Yeah, put me Will, in, coach. Put me in. And like the last episode, Will was just like, "All right, you see this mysterious figure coming up," and I'm like, "Oh my god, is it JD? It's a Yeti." I'm like, "What?" And then five minutes later, quiet. Like, what was it? Eight foot tall figure. I was like, "How tall is him?" Oh, it was like twelve, wasn't it? It's like fifteen. Fifteen. 15 I, was, I was like, "How tall is a bugbear?" And I was like. Oh, it's JD. It has to be. He's like, it's a giant. I'm like, okay. I'm just, I'm, we're never going to find this guy. It's like, where's Waldo? That you just never find. Pretty much. Close the book, give up. JD, <laughs> go home. <laughs> just close it all down. Just, we're done. That's a wrap, boys. Yeah, that's it. We, we, when we actually do get to find him, we just pass him. He never gets introduced. <laughs> Yeah. He's gonna get ready. He's like, "This is my time. That's me. That's me in the background." And y'all are just walking the different direction. I can tell you right now, I will probably not catch that. <laughs> Almost like specifically describing pirates. They want to <laughs> pirate. All you said was they look poor. <laughs> like, yeah. That's not exactly what I'm They're saying. in rags. They're wearing uh, what bags for pants. <laughs> That's pretty pirate. Like. I mean, you didn't even know they were pirates. I never claimed to. Yeah, I never. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> I said, but, but Will looked at me stupid. He's like, you couldn't tell they were pirates from the beginning? No. I mean, at that point, everybody else had caught on. No. 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 <laughs> My first name just happens to be Captain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. That that is that is a level of obvious that it would have to be for me to catch on to something like that. You had a gotta throw in like a peg leg. <laughs> You're on a- Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, of course, well, there's the rats. Both have rats. Yeah. So how many of them are pet rats? I mean, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say pirate from that if he had a pet parrot. Oh, so it has to be parrot. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I like symbolize a the- pirate <laughs> with. Yeah. He's got a I, point. Really, it was fair. So- Every time I need to like reference some kind of cultural big bad, I'm I'm gonna just pull it straight out of the the picture book. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is my reference point. Oh, I love that. Um, do you guys have any any favorite or like most hated NPCs? Anders. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> so quick too. Okay, so quick, yeah. yeah, quick, quick backstory on Anders. Anders is uh, basically our handler. He has been uh, sent by the king to like take care of our bar and kind of watch over, make sure we're not doing anything too ridiculous while we do different odd end jobs for the kingdom. Uh, I don't know why, and I don't even know that he knows why, but since day one, Bryn and Rolo have hated Anders to his very soul, and <laughs> I, I, I just don't know. <laughs> Anders done nothing wrong. Anders does everything wrong. <laughs> don't even try. Never mind. Don't even we've had this conversation so many times. We yeah, have. Uh, it's useless, but... Uh, my my favorite NPC, uh, uh, up to a point, was actually Captain Cobalt, but due to uh, unfortunate circumstances, I can never make friends with him again. Uh, so I, I don't really know the answer to that now. Oh yes, I do. Kyle? Yeah, Kyle. Um, Kyle is a guy that we did a job with in like the first couple of sessions. And I actually got to watch him in full combat uh, a couple sessions ago, and Kyle impressed me. Uh, I really like Kyle. I liked Kyle's attitude. Now I like Kyle's ability to assist us, and so he's just a, a good guy. One of the only NPCs I've like really been nice to. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> you say that like that's yeah. only NPCs. Oh, I, mean, I like Salisam too. God damn it. <laughs> I have an NPC that I absolutely despise. Is it Anders? No. 
<laughs> uh, Clinton here has DM'd a one shot or a uh, session for me and Rob when we were low on players. The character just straight fucking died, possibly because of Rob's shortcomings. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, he took my lifeless body to try to get it revived. And the person who just resurrection <laughs> is just so convinced that because they may or may not be underneath a moderate curse, that any time they need to revive somebody, they need to firstly try to murder the person with that request, traumatize them, and then make it extraordinarily difficult for this individual to acquire these services. When in hindsight, all this person has to do is like, perform this ritual in a locked room. <laughs> Literally all they have to do would avoid all issues. But nah. He had, he had nah. He had a or like, find another cleric with remove curse? Maybe. I don't, that could go well. <laughs> you can bring the dead back to life, okay? Go find the person who cursed you. Kill the ass. <laughs> <laughs> you were dead, you couldn't say that. <laughs> you should have. Yeah, I just pointed yeah, to Rob. Yeah. It's all my fault, Will. I know. I know. I wanted to go streaking up a mountain. <laughs> wanted to get that team side roll. <laughs> <sighs> y'all, y'all are a riot. Oh yeah, it just it get I have to edit out a lot of tangents during my <laughs> editing process. <laughs> Our episodes would be like six hours if not. I feel like yeah. most of it's me. I take full responsibility. <laughs> Whatever weird off track source starts the tangents, Bryn can have those. But the tangents themselves, I'm I'm taking full responsibility there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, Trent, it's your turn. Who do you which NPC have I made that you absolutely just want to wipe from the face of this planet? Or you I mean, love, or you love. Possible. No one loves NPC. Uh, 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 M- uh, NPC that I uh, really, really like, believe it or not, uh, Zade uh, from the uh, Dragon Bane. Uh, That's home- a good one. Uh, home- uh, Zade is the Archmage of the Kingdom, uh, and he's located in the city of Chul. Um, and he, for, for us as the group, uh, we did get off to the uh, uh, best start with him. Uh, but uh, after that, he, he, he was always there for us, wherever we needed. Uh, even if it's the, like the most ridiculous thing, he always tried to help. Uh, he was like our group dad that would just look really disappointed when we came to him with a problem and just be like, Ugh, and then go fix it for us. That's how I feel like Will looks at me when I start talking. <laughs> I wasn't going to say. I wasn't going to say. Oh, uh, <laughs> I wasn't what you're thinking. Uh, oh, oh, I see you have an issue there. Well, that, you guys are kind of dumb to be in, that, in this situation. But I guess I can use my last wish uh, to help you guys out from this genie I have. Like, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, well, I wouldn't have used it on that. Uh, 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 <laughs> Like, I can't think of any other person or NPC who would ever do something like that. So, and the uh, NPC that I hate of all is, uh, or at least everyone oh, is, uh, Salasa Sam. I knew it was going to be Salasa Sam. Dude, I don't know why you hate Salasa Sam. I don't know why you hate everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> everyone else. I just hate Cobalt and Andrew. <laughs> and. Starting to feel like that shady guy. But, uh, uh, Anthony would have been okay if Salazam would have let uh, Edward juggle, but he did not. You're trying to juggle and, in his shop. Ward. Yes, yes Ward. He has breakables. Yes, and because he did not let him juggle, he clearly, uh, was threatened by Edward's skills to outshine him. <laughs> was more threatened that like you're gonna break your shit. No, I'm I'm really good you at the ball. You didn't believe in his skills well enough to believe yeah. that he wouldn't break it. Edward's a master juggler. 
Oh, really? Because I remember a ball falling off a boat. That was actually my fault. <laughs> Your brother threw it off. I was high in the crow's nest. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I was drugged at the time, and uh, I freaked out a little. Mind you. Yeah, that's you fine. weren't drugged. You were under the influence. You were medicated. There you go. <laughs> and, like, voluntarily medicated? Yes. Yeah, that was uh, pure voluntary. Okay, so well, we, if we, found, it, we found the shrooms because of Rolo. And Alfie still, wasn't 100% sure what they were. And I was like, well, this looks like you could smoke it out of a pipe. Let's try it. And, yeah, the rest of the day wasn't so great for Alfie. Yeah. yeah, we're also yeah. called uh, ghost ghost pirates after we just got through getting attacked by ghost pirates. Well, hallucinations are a hell of a thing, you know. Yeah, <laughs> cocaine's a hell of a drug. Yeah, <laughs> that is in the making. <laughs> no, 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 no. Is there like a list that you're, you're trying to like like a bucket list? Yes, of- exactly, exactly. I don't think we should See, let I- that happen. <laughs> what you don't you don't want to witness a drug deal? No, I don't want to witness assassination. Rogue. It all makes sense now, doesn't it? Like hundred percent. But I'm not one of those assassination rogues that have, or one of those rogues that have like a tragic backstory. I just was born and raised to kill people, so that was my job, and I just learned to steal things. So drugs are kind of just. You're in recreational, huh? Your character would have to have a backstory for it to be tragic. Mm. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> he did. He did the old. Uh, my backstory is the same as my brother, except I like shiny stuff. <laughs> I added like three other sentences. Okay, like it's fine. <laughs> uh. uh. So, is there any characters that you guys have, like, made and you're excited to play or, like, wish you've chosen over, like, another one? Hmm. I wouldn't say that, like, I have several that I'm excited to play. Will and I are working on building a uh, a subclass for, like, a puppeteer. That's, like, a warlock subclass. Or is it or is it going to be wizard subclass? I think warlock would be better. Well, I've seen one that's a wizard, but um, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. But like most of the characters that I make, I'm like, oh, I really want to play this. I usually just throw them into one shots at the end of the month. So and then by the time I get around to Rolo getting himself killed, uh, it'll be enough time passed that I can use one from the one shot in the in the campaign. Uh, I love how he says that like it's just an inevitability. <laughs> I mean, it definitely is. I can see the twinkle in Will's eye. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my finger on like seven different booby traps at all times. And my investigation is a plus one. Yeah. So, <laughs> screwed. Um, I definitely have some characters that I've played in home games, whether they be campaigns or one shots, that I really did love. And I would like to bring them back into maybe either a one shot or a future campaign but also have about 15 characters that have never seen the light of day and are just sitting in my D&D beyond just waiting their turn so I feel that uh, I, I'm pretty much the uh, same way uh, like every character I've uh, played as even if it's the most dumb character ever uh, I still love them, uh, cause I made them. Uh, y- you gotta love what you make. Uh, Fair enough. Uh, and I can't, I, say I, I, I can't say I've ever regretted uh, ever, ever Play. playing a certain character or class. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, I will say. Uh, uh, I've uh, the thing that I've regretted the most uh, while make, uh, uh, making a character is uh, my choice of not multiclassing because I've always tried to keep you know just one class 
and do that, but I never really delve into multi-class all that much. And I feel like that's a shame. We're only level so, 12, Trent. There's still time. There's still time. It takes forever to get levels. Well, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we try every week. It works. Session 50. You, you get one level. That's the kind of thing I'm after. That's it. <laughs> It'll be a whole decade before we get to 20. <laughs> okay, so if y'all's party got a free wish spell right now, what would they do with it? Well, we would when not I... let Rolo have it. Wait, is it just Absolutely. one spell, or is it one person in the party each gets a spell? No, it's one one spell for the whole party. Y'all have to decide I, something. I would steal it and then run away and wish for something. Uh, that checks uh, out. Me, uh, me and Alfie would attempt to knock him out, uh, and then we I'm would the decide one. on uh, who would uh, be the wish. Rolo Dodge is also a hell of a reaction. <laughs> uh I would like to hope that we would use it for something good, or at the very least, uh, use it to help ourselves maybe accomplish some more things we would like to accomplish and, you know, not use it for something terribly destructive. I don't see that ever happening. Anders gets smited. Yeah, that's the that's the problem here. That's exactly what I thought you'd say, <laughs> is you're going to hurt Anders with it. And then we have no one to run our bar. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I would have an idea for the wish that we wish uh, Captain Hillbald, uh, not, like, not hate us anymore. Oh, absolutely. That's a, that's a good. No. Why don't you wish Rolo is actually a chaotic good character? <laughs> I also love how nobody said go home, even though you're like, yeah, I think that's the plot of our campaign. I, 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 I changed it. Chaotic neutral, okay? That's what I actually put, not chaotic good. I'm not chaotic evil. Debatable. Hold back not- to the Feywild thing is more like, hey, if it happens, awesome. But we're just here having fun, and we're going to see what happens. <laughs> Fair enough. Wish JD into the party. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a little metagamey, but you know. Also, a full level. so many other things. Enlighten me. Mega legs for temporary. God damn it. So Rolo bought a mini horse. And he's like 6'1", riding this little <laughs> tiny horse everywhere. I'm trying to get the most muscular, like, gym bro legs on this little horse so I don't have to get away. You can now give it to I a have, child. Make that child have, happy. I have to ride her like a crotch rocket, otherwise my feet would hit the ground. <laughs> How does, how does she support your weight? Uh, she with much <laughs> effort. I love me walking. <laughs> well, my other horse is traumatized, so like I can't really ride him. Not by my fault. fault. Yeah. By me, he got hit by cannonballs. But it was indeed your fault. <laughs> I didn't shoot the cannons. You know, the people that had the cannon. It was a ghost ship. Oh, you had can that I, time. Can I, I say real quick? Oh, oh, the same, oh, that was my ankle that got so rough. Every single question she has asked us so far has just been nothing but us just going off on a ridiculous thing that we've done. We I need to circle back. The horse was traumatized because it was hit with cannonballs. It was on a ship, and the ship was hit with cannons. It was in a terrible <laughs> ship cannon explosion accident. Okay. The next, the second time it got hit by <laughs> was after I tried to kill the captain, and he just opened fire and hit. Or he didn't hit the horse, did he? No, no he didn't hit the no, horse. No, hit you. No, he not. He hit close to us. The horse knocked me off. Um, I still had a fly spell going. And my poor right ankle has been ripped to shreds at least 17 times now. Like, um, <laughs> it's, it's bad. My ankle's weird. So that's why they make new stirrups nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, he came back. <laughs> Barely. Came back. He came After back. Some time. 
So do you just have him like lodged up somewhere, or does he like follow you around? He's he's at our he's at our keep at the moment. Okay. Um, he he barely made it there. Uh, I I honestly thought he'd be better off without me. So after the cannonballs went and stopped firing, I didn't go back and find him. So I was like, he'll be fine. And then he just showed back up at our sta- at our keep. So I was like, oh, I believe a courthouse would rule that as abandonment. <laughs> I mean, probably, but... Does he feel abandoned? Yes. Probably. Is, is he going to get modified memory? Probably. <laughs> you going to learn it? No, I'm going to ask Trent since we're buddies now. <laughs> You're gonna, are you going to, like, remove the trauma from your yes. horse? <laughs> Otherwise, That's the plan. You... <laughs> you, see, you could use the wish spell for that. I mean, I... But actually making myself go invisible when I roll stealth sounds so much better. <laughs> Get away with so many things. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, this is a DM question. Uh, I'm scared. Was there anything that like inspired your campaign? Like where did you where did you get the idea that like you know this is this is it this is going to be the world the plot all that sweet jazz? I would super like to be able to just say oh it's it's all original it's just my brainchild uh, that that'd be uh, inspiration uh, in my experience comes subconsciously a lot of the time uh, like. I'll definitely pull pieces from animes that I've watched or books that I've read or games that I've played. Uh, for example, uh, Hunter x Hunter, the known world is in a big ass lake and that may or may not be relatable. Uh, or dump. What? What? I didn't that's, say news, that's news to me. Write it down. Hurry. <laughs> Where's my notes? Hey. <laughs> Hey, that's metagaming. <laughs> yeah, I, I metagame all the time. I just put IDK next to it. I don't it's know. A, it's a secret tool we're going to use later. <laughs> uh, but it's hard for me to just like pin down uh, where certain things have been uh, drawn with parallels between an outside source and just something that I've wanted to do. Uh mm-hmm. The there's a desert country uh, that borders the main country that they stay in most of the time, and I've had that in the back of my head for like three years. And then every time I'm DMing a campaign, it's just like, "Hey, you're here," and then they just never leave, or they're here and this exists, and they just fucking go to a different plane. Like, <laughs> Wait, so is that, what that that desert area is that in this campaign? Yeah. Yeah, it's the Is country. Is there a rent Yeah, I want a camel now. <laughs> oh, no, go! So but... you can traumatize it just like your horse? I mean, I didn't yes. traumatize the horse. <laughs> Incorrect. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> the cannon. No, I wasn't. Chip. <sighs> I feel like you were also the cause of those cannons. They boarded before I did. <laughs> I just happened to go into the cactus quarters first. <laughs> Try to steal things before anybody else could loot it. But yeah, I mean, that was. <laughs> Should have been watching your horse. <laughs> I mean, I, I was. He was on the other ship. Like, he was just like. <laughs> this could be a crazy idea. Sticking with the party tends to work rather well sometimes. But what's the fun in that, Wob? <laughs> I guess there is none. <laughs> no, party forty plus stealth, so I just go with myself. Incorrect. Wait, can you wait? Who can help, who can help? Alfie. He can't roll that high stealth. Yes, he can. Uh do you not remember Has- the crunk against the wall situation? <laughs> I mean no? uh, Okay, look. I Edward remember. has a D10 inspiration die. Alfie's okay. modifier to stealth is plus eight. Eight. Mm-hmm. Eight. Okay, so yes. a natural 20, pass without a trace. That right there is 38. And then Hot a and plain 10. Sight. 
Okay, so let me change. Let, let me change it. If the stars align and you roll all perfect rolls, <laughs> thirty plus is still fairly conservative. <sighs> it's not roll a level though. Uh, I'm not a uh, roll. Edwards... Oh. I think Edward got over thirty-two. He did one time, and it amazed the fuck out of me. I, uh, I think it was like I want to say it was like forty. No, I don't think you ever hit forty. Well, I think it was bard. like thirty-four. <laughs> he's a bard. Could have happened. Yeah. Never doubt what a bard can do. Well, Banning I mean, him I, from my next campaign. Every time I doubt it, <laughs> I just my memory changed, so it doesn't it doesn't matter. The number uh, of times my has been used on an enemy versus the number of times it's been used on a party member is uh, fantastic. It has it's never been used on an enemy. Exactly. A, yeah, that's, that's the point. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Has there ever been a moment where you're like, yes, I have this plot point coming up, I'm excited, and then your players just, like, do something far out of left field, you're like, fuck. Every day. <laughs> hey, there's no other answer, just every day. We do try. <laughs> oh, my turn. We lost Trent. Oh, it says he's <laughs> offline. <laughs> it may have crashed out on him. But, uh... There he goes. I gave them this super obvious, there's a whole ass missing village. It was pretty much the most obvious out of all of these bounties. And they literally went to it last. So <laughs> that one, I guess that, yes, that happens. You said sea voyage for one of them. We're going to do that. You also <laughs> said three magical items for that yeah, sea voyage. That and all I got was a Girl Scout sash. On so, you? That is on you! You made it! Be more specific next time? Yes, maybe really you'll specific. get something more specific. What badges? You could have said, like, man, it'd be really cool to go invisible. Maybe you'd have gotten a ring of invisibility. Uh, next time, that's what I'll do. <laughs> now you know. Uh, Knowing is half the battle. I still just realized G. G. Joe. those socks out of my pocket. Yeah. They've been in the whole time. You know what the other half of the battle is? Not Extreme letting me be violence. In it. Extreme violence. I got that down. Yeah. It's too bad you don't know you, you don't have the knowing part. <laughs> Whoa, I mean that's shit. what you got a twin for, right? Yes, I'm definitely what was that? Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> What were you saying, Rob? Um, yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, Alfie definitely does his best to try to keep Rolo from minimizing the collateral damage and uh, guide him failing. at least in a semblance of the right direction. That's either a lie or a failure, well, and I can't tell which. To be fair, it's most I certainly a failure. Got really <laughs> close to getting Rolo to apologize last session. That, that was, was actually... That was actually really big. I didn't apologize, but I got close. I know. But you almost mouthed the words, so like baby steps, you know? Well, I was going to be like, I apologize, but then I was like, I'm apologetic, and then I flew away. So, it's close. Uh, that's pretty close. It's yeah. close. One day. One day. I said that I can apologize, but I'm not going to. And then, <laughs> to be fair, they shot me first. So stay out of people's um, shit. I was yeah. No, that, that was a miscommunication between me and you because I wasn't looking up their freaking like cloaks and shit. I was just looking around to see if I saw any cult symbols. <laughs> like if you see a whole if you see like a group of people all wearing the same robes, the same cloaks, wouldn't you think they were in a cult? No. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Go to courage him. Yeah. <laughs> uh I mean, like, colts and cloaks kind of, kind of... Yeah, coordination, hoods, you know? The only one. You should be. Rob even had it. He had it written in his notes. And I was just like, oh, that's right. That could be a cult. And then I thought about it. That's what I said. Possibly a cult. You say possibly? All I saw was cult, exclamation point. I don't know if I would act on it, but I would think it's a cult. I mean, all I did was just look around for them. <laughs> To see if there was any cult symbols. And this guy thought 
that I was like lifting up their cloaks and looking like invading their complete. I'm space. I'm the big bad D. Listen, <laughs> it's it's <laughs> always my fault. <laughs> Whatever, it was, it's my fault because it factually is. That, it is. <laughs> he he did say I make an investigation check, and that generally means using your hands. Okay. You know? No, I, I did not say that. I said I want to look, and he said perception or investigation and i i was gonna go for perception but then he was just like no nah, this would be an investigation so i don't even get a choice of the matter <laughs> that's what i should do more often not give you a choice <laughs> <laughs> and that does not go well for anybody you get a traumatized horse I feel like it would go worse for you and that's how lessons are learned i'm just gonna take all my dm frustrations out on anders Poor Anders. Every bit of it. Yeah. Shady guy first, then Anders. Shady guy first, then, I then Anders. I don't like Shady guy, man. <laughs> he has weapons. He doesn't have weapons. What does he have? <laughs> um, yeah. Is there any like tips you guys would recommend to people trying to get into D&D or trying to get into DMing even? You want to take uh, the DM one first? Yeah. Uh, if I were to tell somebody... Like, give them pointers on how to start DMing. One thing, I would prepare them. Your players will never do what you expect. That's that's just a written rule, and it's pretty much the only one. Your players will never do what you expect. Uh, everything else can be chalked up to, hey, sometimes you got to roll with it, and uh, don't stress about it. Pretty solid advice. Uh, as far as just getting people into D&D, deal with problematic people. What was the first part of that? I didn't catch it. Don't be afraid to deal with people. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Um, But as far as bringing somebody into D&D, my initial journey with that is probably what I would kind of tell them. Because, like I said, I didn't start playing D&D until about two and a half years ago. And I kick myself all the time for not starting this years and years earlier. And I didn't because I just saw, hey, look, D&D, there's a whole lot of math, a whole lot of rules, rules for certain rules, rules for other rules. That seems like a lot, and I just don't know that I can do it. And then a friend of mine finally convinced me to do it, and I haven't turned back since. So I would just say to people, if you have the inclination to want to try it, just try it. Find you a group, find you some friends, get them together, just throw something together. And you're going to have fun. That's just all there is to that. You can always go with my philosophy. There are no rules. <laughs> I guess you can. <laughs> I mean, so like, the only thing that I would really give uh, a, a, like, that I would tell somebody would be, don't be afraid to be silly. Like, don't be afraid to, like, like oh, I'm going to get embarrassed by doing something that I think is stupid. Because a lot of good moments come from doing very stupid things. Could not agree more. Oh, that would be awful. It's not that bad. <laughs> DM another one shot. I'll make a character that's all classes. <laughs> you. You, have, you have that uh, scroll to comment? Right for you, buddy. Don't worry. I'll have at least three levels in wizard. I counter smell it. <laughs> Fred, is there any advice you would give to a newbie player? Fear the old blood. <laughs> Did Trent. you hear it, Trenton? No. Oh. <laughs> I also have a fan base. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I'll plug Here we go. So, I've had a couple people that said that they really liked Rolo. So now I uh, call them my Roly Polies. <laughs> and I love it. It's uh, having fans is good. It's just. It's <laughs> You this know. hasn't gotten to his head at all. No, nope. it's gonna it's gonna let him think he can justify his actions. Exactly. By oh, every action. <laughs> I do it for the ratings. It's fine. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's like, oh, I must have already listened to this episode. He's poisoning someone. No, this is a new poison. <laughs> it's a whole new kind of poisoning. <laughs> May three. What? I couldn't think of a name, so I just called it the hurt flower poison. <laughs> then I have the paralyzing poison, 
and then I have the Rolo form. <laughs> so you've named one of them, and you practically just describe the other two. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't thought of a name for two of them. <laughs> Working on it. Those two came about first, too, by the way. But yeah, I'm, I'm aware. Yeah, 25. Yeah, 50 pounds of that fruit. Not pounds. Units. Pounds. Jesus. Oh, I'm also. Not the, how it works. I'm also the one with the bag of holding. So. Oh. Yeah. And I just think I could put bodies in it. So I got like a graveyard. Oh, and you I. You can and put bodies in your bag of holding? He has if to dislocate try. the shoulders, you know? Okay. Yeah. It's okay. also on a, Is that other belt homebrew? Yes. It's also on a homebrew belt that any container or any, uh, that is attached to the belt, it triples the size. Oh, okay. 1,500 square foot. Is that right? 1,500 square foot bag of holding space. I was like, we barely fit a half leg in our bag of holding. Be more imaginative. Yeah, I, I, I put a werewolf in mine. No, we tried. Our DM just flat out told us no. I tore his shoulders off. <laughs> oh, Will is a huge rule of cool guy. So if you can find a way to explain it to him where he's like, that could work. He's going to let us do it. Oh. Will I also make you deal with the consequences of that? I certainly hope Oh, so. uh, 100%. So how many bodies do you have in your bag of holding? Oh, no, I just emptied them to the guards. I don't think there's any in there right now. Well, you did kill four people, and you had four bodies in there, and then you put those on the guard table, and then you put a werewolf in there, and then you put the werewolf in an innocent, unconscious woman's room. Yep, yep, sounds about right. That, that did happen. That did happen. So I don't think there are any corpses in there at the moment. No, nope, I didn't get to go over to the Yeti. Okay, the, the Yeti is definitely pushing it. Oh, I yeah, that's not going to work, homie. I will dismember every single bit. <laughs> if Mans is 15 uh, feet tall. It's only four feet tall when you take his legs off. <laughs> <laughs> Personal at all. We have long body. <laughs> oh. My word. Oh, put a giant. You're gonna go, you're gonna go get a hatchet. That way, next time you need to hack up a body, you just have that on hand. Just make a bone saw. I mean, I do have a semi lightsaber butterfly knife. Yeah, but, but it only does psychic. Things. Not a lightsaber. I know. I want a lightsaber. You should get me a lightsaber. <laughs> I should not. You should. <laughs> what, what better tool for a rogue than a lightsaber? It's a blowtorch <laughs> and a dagger in one. It's, you want a blowtorch? And how how does it become a blowtorch? The lightsaber. Oh, blowtorch. Yeah, I was thinking blowpipe. I was like, what? Hmm? That'd be interesting. Just that later. No, we can't. I need a thing for all the drugs I'm gonna find. <laughs> no pot of kingpin. Alfie has you for that. Oh, you do have a long pipe. Yes, I have a big old Gandalf pipe. Yeah, I'll definitely put some crack in that. <laughs> Please no. Know. Why would you do that? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Do you have like an actual list of drugs that you want to try to make in game? I this never crossed my mind until he said I had a bag of shrooms. Like none of this, none of none of that crossed my mind until he was just like, "You have a bag of shrooms." I'm like, "Are they hallucinative shrooms?" And he's like, "I don't know. Try one." So I got that one guy to try one. <laughs> It definitely was. He got his teeth knocked out. Oh. <laughs> yeah. NPCs. What was his name? Rob, what was that what was that NPC's name? I definitely remember. Uh I mean I don't, I don't, I don't his remember. Name wrote down in here cause, yeah. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure I wrote, I even wrote down got his ass kicked. Well, I gotta go back, way back, boys. Yeah, that was yeah. I don't remember it. I don't remember the uh, the one chick that was the she Pete. running around. It was Pete. People. Pete. <laughs> oh, how do we forget Pete? Yeah, <laughs> poor Pete. I think you would have to care Pete. about him before oh, you could worry he about was forgetting a him. Excellent source of entertainment. <laughs> I also had a ferret that I burnt up. I like you say that casually if you yeah. look at your nails like. I, I burned a so, ferret to death. So he gave me he gave me a ferret belt that I could just like 
like kind of just I'm trying not to be wake it up, wake it up, just yeah, wake it, wake it up. up. And it's, it's called ass, scrapping man. it like you do a cat. I was gonna say whip it up. <laughs> um, oh my god! Uh, but uh, it ga- it gave me sneak attack because he was an ally, and without realizing that he was in my awesomely made pocket that I put in my cloak. I pulled my Girl Scout badge for Fireball, and yeah, the ferret kind of didn't make it because I pulled it. In, I pulled it like five feet away from the guy. So, <laughs> oh, there was no save or fail for this ferret. It had two hit points. Yeah, no. It, like, what do you What do you want? Was, was the ferret on the Fireball? No, it was. Like, he was in my cloak, but I was in the Fireball. Oh, because if I would have took, if I would have moved away, um, right, he would have got an attack of opportunity, and I wouldn't have got to Gee, do it. Who would have gotten attack of opportunity? Cobalt. Yeah. Why? Why were you fighting Captain Cobalt? Because he was a douche. <laughs> I, I think it was because you broke into his cabin and just tried to murder him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did. No, no, no. no, an assassin has a target that they're going to be monetarily compensated for killing. Yeah, I was compensating myself. I put out the hit. That's called murder. That's called murder. I was compensating myself. With yeah. good feelings. You stole money from me. Factually incorrect. Factually correct. I'm, I'm a little more concerned now, like, when you said that you were getting, you're becoming more like your character. Not that yeah. much. <laughs> Not that much. Know. Next time you get an amber alert, you're gonna see Grin's mugshot on it. <laughs> this is the suspect. Amber alert. Oh, yeah. you no, that's that's a blue alert. Oh, is that what that was the other day? Yes. <laughs> I got one of those. I was like, what the fuck that, is a blue alert? There was two people that are wanted for first degree murder murder that are running around. That's what that's for. Amber alerts are for kidnapping children. I'm glad I don't live in y'all state. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a couple of people who are committed first degree murder. They're just wandering around. Well, I mean, they escaped custody. I mean, it wasn't just like they just, they were let go. And they were like, oh, man, oops, alert. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, man, we really fucked up. Oops. Tell somebody about this. Speaking of, did they ever catch those guys? I don't watch the news. I don't either, so I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I haven't got another alert. <laughs> Maybe they got him. They could at least give us an all clear alert. Just saying. Nah, dude. Live in a state of constant panic and fear. Yeah. Are <laughs> <laughs> you? Not the place. <laughs> I was like, I think I need them to keep a l- little bit better track of like inmates here. Because I... My school is like right next to like a death row prison. Why would they do that? And you're making comments about our state? (laughs) (laughs) They haven't escaped escaped is the thing. Yeah, but I mean, if one escapes from yours, you're in trouble. (laughs) But I've, I've looked it up and actually most people who are on death row in Texas are on it for like killing officers. Not because they committed like crazy crimes. It's like, oh, you happen to kill an officer when you were escaped so you get death row. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes crazy. sense. Confirmed. <laughs> there was like two where it was like, oh yeah, these are just ha- absolutely heinous crimes you deserve to die, sir. Everybody else is like, mean, I was just trying to run away and I accidentally hit one with my car. Yeah. But, or like not- you had to shoot out with the police and... Uh, not in D and D wise, because my character would be dead in- instantly. But in real life, I do believe for an eye for an eye. So, like you would be dead multiple D&D times D&D. over. So many times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be bad. Yeah, you don't have enough diamonds that I've stolen for you to bring me back that many times. I do not. But that's wild. <sighs> I think that's all the questions that I've had prepared for y'all. Okay. Um, this was an absolute pleasure. This was... An experience. It, 
I thought this was gonna go well, but this is this is y'all have me laughing so much. Got the roller. Well, that's that's our main goal for the entire podcast is to to give you some really great stories, but at the same time make you laugh the entire way through telling those stories. So if we're accomplishing oh that, then we're doing what we set out for. Also, I love. I love how like y'all y'all been in your sessions, you know what what happened, but from an outside perspective, just hearing, yeah, the the horse got shot with a cannon. I lit the ferret on fire. I love how both of those were referencing <laughs> me. Out of context, uh it, you get confused if we're talking about our sessions for sure. <laughs> oh my god. But it's just so it's so casual, like y'all have the context and it's like Yep, you know, another day, another session. I'm like, oh, excuse yeah, it's me, sir. Another vendetta. <laughs> yep, the list goes on. Listen, if our FBI agents ever see our Discord and it's just like, yeah, yeah, I totally killed that guy. Just assume it was about D and D. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> um, well, I mean, if he goes look at our Discord now, it's just like a whole bunch of paragraphs of me trying to defend why I tried to kill this guy. <laughs> Really, it was right. self defense. Yeah, it's a whole, like defendant court case right there. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, I'm like, I'm 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 trying to like argue with my DM because I I'm, I'm like a criminal justice minor. I'm a forensics major, so I'm like, but wouldn't I know if the body did this? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like that, the investigation check wasn't high enough, and I was like. I mean, I have tried to pull logic into this so many times, it doesn't work. The problem with that is that it's Bryn logic. <laughs> it's actual logic. I want you to explain to me how I get disadvantaged at shooting a gun five feet away from somebody. I because, never understood that. I'm yeah, like, it's just an easier target. They're on the ground staying still. Yeah, yeah it's, like, okay. it's a balancing thing. Balancing still part. I can't defend that one. Why you would get disadvantaged on a range attack against somebody who's prone when you're standing over them with a loaded gun. Can't defend that. I'd throw that out the window. But as far as there's a dude with a fucking sword on my ass trying to stab me so and I, I want to shoot him, he's going to try to stop you from shooting him. So I uncanny dodge to the side, put the gun to his That's chin. That's not how uncanny dodge works. Gun to his chin. <laughs> He's done. <laughs> Maybe we should end this right here. Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, this has been an absolute joy and a pleasure. Uh, well, we were just happy you guys off. brought us on. Yeah, oh, no, yeah thank you for making time out of your day to come and let me let me pester you with a couple questions. Yeah, no problem. Share your, share your experience. Um, y'all make sure you go check them out. Check them out on Twitter. Uh, SAS underscore pod, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look them up on YouTube, Spotify, really Apple Podcasts, all, all the good places. All the, good all the places. places. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. All right. Goodbye.